Hello guys! Before I start this video, I want to give personal thanks to my top tier patrons, Berhard, Eduardo and the Texorcist. Thank you guys very much, I couldn't do it without you. Also, did you know that my patrons got an exclusive preview of this video, as well as many of the others? So if you want to support this channel and also get some exclusive content, you can head over to patreon.com and become a patron. I'm very grateful for all the support. And now I hope you enjoy this video. Hello guys and welcome to another one of my little videos. Today's video will be about the first Harry Potter film. And I told you before, I'm a big fan of Harry Potter. Uh, it's probably my second favorite franchise after Star Wars. And uh, I grew up with the Harry Potter books and also the Harry Potter movies. I was almost the same age uh, as uh, the actors in the, in the movies. So I like the Harry Potter series very much and have a big connection with it. But today with me uh, is uh, Jakub. Uh, Jakub is uh, my friend from uh, work uh, originally. We used to be colleagues and now we're very good friends. And Jakub here has never read Harry Potter and uh, he hasn't actually really seen the films either. So this week we sat down and we watched the first Harry Potter film because I thought it would be interesting uh, to see the uh, opposing views of someone who loves the Harry Potter franchise and uh, loves the books and someone who hasn't read the books at all and is seeing the movie for more or less the first time. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, so Jakub, uh, when, I, uh, when I first saw uh, Harry Potter, I've already read the books and I was a big fan and uh, you're a couple of years older than me, so maybe uh, that's probably why you didn't go for or didn't fall for Harry Potter because, uh, you know, when I first started reading Harry Potter, I was like 10, 11, something like that. Uh, and it was shortly before the first film came out. So I suppose, do you remember, uh, do you remember, uh, the Harry Potter mania from back then? And what, what did you think about it? Well, yeah, the, the hype for this, for this franchise was very huge, you know, and, uh, everyone was, uh, talking about it. And, uh, you know, there, there were like uh, two group of people, the people who loved, uh, Harry Potter franchise and people who loved the Lord of the Rings, yeah. you know, and I was kind of into the Lord of the Rings, mm. but, in the same time, I never really, really liked fantasy genre mm. like itself. So this Harry Potter thing was never really for me. Mm. I mean, I don't like really uh, magic and dragons and this kind of stuff, right. you know. And also there is a, a kind of thing that I'm not really proud about. And that is that I was never really into reading books like mm. in general. So having like eight books. Yeah, seven, seven books to read. Mm. <laughs> it would never happen. I think if I if I would start back then in two thousand two, or I would probably never finish it, like until today. If I, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's interesting. Like I I wasn't a big reader, but uh, I I did read a little when when I was uh, when I was a kid. I I read like adventure books for kids and stuff, especially this Czech. Author uh, Jaroslav Foglar, I, I read his uh, his books about young boys, and uh, it, those were really good adventure books. So that's what got me into reading. Uh, of course, I started with comics uh, first, and then when the Harry Potter franchise came along, a lot of my friends read it before me, but and I. I wasn't really that interested. But then my aunt gave me the first two books for Christmas, and I, I read them in like four days and I immediately went to one of my friends to borrow his copies of the third and fourth book and uh, uh, and finish those as well uh, so actually at the time already the four of the books were uh, were out and the movie was coming out shortly and uh, that brings us uh, that brings us to the movie and this movie of course is known here in Europe and uh, uh, in Britain 
as uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, uh, whereas in America it's known as uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, which uh, I, I'm not sure if uh, I don't think that's like American English. They just that's just a made up title. But what's interesting, we watched uh, the a behind the scenes documentary, and you could see that they actually shot all uh, the lines that were uh, said uh, Philosopher's Stone in the original, they reshot them as uh, saying Sorcerer's Stone for the American version. So, and I've never seen the American version. Like my Blu-ray is, uh, I bought it here. And so it's uh, the European British version. Uh, so I, I, I'm not sure if they're actually like completely different takes or if they just read up the word, but mm -hmm. I think they're probably completely different takes in the probably American version. They yeah. said it in the, uh, yeah. Well, it would, it would, it wouldn't work if you put the yeah. sorcerers and, and philosophers. Yeah, probably a, the, the lip sync wouldn't fit. Uh, it, yeah. would, would be, it would be really bad. ADR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gone, but this is important. This is about the philosopher's stone. But certainly there exists. Uh, two versions of Harry Potter, yeah, with uh, different delivery, and <laughs> yeah, and it's pretty kind interesting. Of interesting. Also, well, the version we watched, uh, I think it was the theatrical version, but there's like an extended version, and but we watched the bonus uh, features later, which included uh, some deleted scenes. deleted scenes, and I think the the extended version is basically just with these deleted scenes uh -huh. okay. put back in. I think that it, it was mostly uh, a good choice to delete it because yeah, yeah, yeah. some of them didn't really work. And yeah, dragged and a they little dragged. bit. Yeah. The pacing of, of the movie is kind of inconsistent. You know, mm. like there is a... Of course, the health of the movie is uh, a lot of expositions. And also, because we t they tell the story from the perspective of the kids, mm. they are very speculative. And this is kind of stuff when you're writing a script, mm. you want to uh, move uh, the story forward. Uh, the one thing that you shouldn't do is to do by exposition to saying something, and then you have filled yep. it and 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 pushed forward. And they have choose this because uh, they needed to establish and set up all this all the stuff. So it was a clever thing to let the children to spec speculate about stuff. But it's a uh, it's a really lazy yeah. storytelling. Yeah. This sort of thing works very differently in a book, mm -hmm. uh, and actually the Harry Potter books are uh, at their core they're like sort of detective mystery books. Mm -hmm. uh, so every uh, ev each book has like a new mystery that they have to solve by the end of the book, and in that way, I think uh, that's a pretty good format for films as well. But uh, it works, uh, it works really well in the books here. And here you have the the mystery of the philosopher's stone and what it is and uh, why it's at Hogwarts, and of course Voldemort and uh, and when I when I first saw the movie, I already read the books twice. <laughs> Because and that was in like half a year or something. I I reread the books at least twice, uh, and I went to the theater like super uh, excited, and I was kind of disappointed, but only as a young reader of of the books. Like looking back now, I think these first couple of films were really good adaptations of the books. You know, at the time I was like, oh, they left out this scene and then they left out this scene and. Uh, I I was really into the books, and I still feel like this about some of the other films because they left out some really pivotal scenes to the story. Whereas here, they really left out just the uh, the stuff that wasn't really important for uh, for the core story. This brings me to uh, a question for you, because. Uh, me as a reader of the books, uh, like I can fill in a lot of the gaps that are sort of glossed over or left out of the movie uh, altogether. So I'm curious for someone who hasn't read the books, did you did you find the story easy to follow? Well, the story itself was pretty easy to follow, I would say. Mm -hmm. There was there were some places when I felt a little bit lost. The movie itself is filled with a lots of exposition mm -hmm. stuff, but 
uh, you can really compress all the stuff from probably huge book. Well, actually, like the first first book is like this thick. It's, oh, it's very short. But, really? <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, 250 pages, something like that. Yeah, I remember when uh, when the kids went to the big castle, uh, Hogwarts, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. For the first time, and there was this invitation meeting. There were names and and stuff told in in the movie that I was that I had no idea what they mean, and yeah, yeah. I had to ask you because. Yeah, I remember you asked me about the Hogwarts houses. Yeah. And yeah, that's and, and I I never realized that because uh knowing the books it just sort of I I just knew that stuff so I didn't miss the information in the movie. Uh but look uh, uh I realized when you asked they don't really and this is something that's very uh sort of important in the books uh the houses and they didn't really describe uh what the houses are and uh their uh different uh history qualities yeah. and history and of course they they do say like all the dark wizards came from slytherin but that's about it so yeah i thought uh interesting it's interesting in a way how uh it's the the first movie is probably uh the worst off in terms of exposition because you have to introduce the world so you have to have a lot of exposition Uh, but at the same time, there actually isn't enough exposition from the point of view of a reader of the books, or rather, actually, of uh, someone who doesn't know the books, and they're missing out on a lot of information that might be important, and maybe uh, in the future films, because uh, some of the other houses play a role uh, in the future in the future stories. So, I also noticed that in the movie, there are a lot of scenes that, that they are kind of rushed. In a way that they uh, they set up something, and uh, there should be a following scene or some other mm -hmm. scene, but they they just jump cut into uh, the same scene that, and there is something missing. Mm -hmm. Like when they when they got into Hagrid's place with the dragon. With, yeah, with the dragon. I, yeah. I was wondering about that because you mentioned uh, yeah. when we were watching the movie. Yeah, because because. Uh, The dragon just got up the egg. It just yeah yeah, and uh, and there was just a little scene uh, with uh, Draco. Uh, yes, and now uh, they get back to the scene, and Dumbledore yeah already uh, you know banned the dragon from from the property, and it was like <laughs> when does this happen? Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, it's interesting because uh, this specifically was a, one of the scenes that I felt like, oh, they shouldn't have left it out. Uh, and uh, you missed it, even though uh, you never read the books, you didn't know, you, you could feel that there was a gap in the yeah. story. Yeah. So, uh, and I, I wouldn't have thought that that would be a thing, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so what, what, what happened? Uh, well, actually in the book, The the story is that uh because uh Ron's brother studies dragons in uh uh Romania, which oh, they yeah, do yeah. mention yeah, in the yeah. movie, they uh realize that they have to get get rid of the dragon because he's just trouble for Hagrid. Uh -huh. They're afraid that Hagrid's gonna get into trouble. Uh so they write a letter to Charlie and he sends some of his friends for the dragon, but they have to give give the dragon to them in secret. So they fly in on brooms and they bring the dragon up to uh, the uh, astronomy tower. Mm -hmm. uh, and and when they're coming back, they are... Uh, oh, and uh, Draco overhears them talking about this plan. So when they're coming back, uh, they get caught. And that's, uh, you know, where the story goes uh, also in the movie. But there they just get caught immediately mm -hmm. after leaving uh, Hagrid's. And Yeah. Well, if I think about it, do you think that it, this scene really missing from the movie that it adds something into the story? Not really. That's yeah. the thing. Like, yeah. I that's why I thought uh, when they left it out, uh, you know, looking at it objectively, I thought mm -hmm. this was uh, a scene that didn't need to be in the movie. That it didn't uh, have anything to do with the main story. Of course, Hagrid had to get his dragon because uh, that was the whole plot point. Mm -hmm. That he got the dragon egg from the bad guy who at the time we thought was Snape and then turns out to be Quirrell, of course. Spoiler alert for like a 15 year old movie. 20. It's a, 
Actually, 20. It is 20. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that. We feel really old. Yeah, that's amazing to me that it's a 20-year-old movie. But yeah. Yeah. I also remember like it was yesterday. Yeah. Even though I was never really a fan of it, but yeah. it was everywhere. Yeah. I, I really wonder if, if this scene was actually shot and they just cut it from from the original edit or if it was wasn't shot at all. You know? No, I think it was already left out from the script from the because script. because in the script of or rather in the scenes they do like explain it away in oh. some other way. Okay. So I, I, I'm pretty sure they never shot that scene. There's a, a lot of like little plot points that are left out because of these scenes. Like, for example, uh, actually Neville gets caught with them that night and he's with them then in the Forbidden Forest when they go with Hagrid for their punishment. Oh, yeah. So Neville's there too. Because uh, Neville actually heard Draco talking about having them caught. So he went and to warn them and he gets caught too. Uh, in the books, they made, make a lot more fuss about like them losing 50 points for Gryffindor, uh, -huh. uh because they get caught. Uh, and Neville loses 50 points to Gryffindor as well. So that's why at the end he wants to fight them and stop them from losing any more points and Hermione freezes him. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so yeah. in, in the film that kind of doesn't make so much sense mm -hmm. because why is Neville involved at all? Yeah, I also wonder, but yeah. yeah. And that's, uh, actually the, the one thing that is really great that this, this movie was made 20 years ago. Mm. Is the fact that it's uh, from the cinematography? Mm. It's really beautiful, and it's yeah. very yeah. kind of it's a retro for for, for <laughs> nowadays. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. also, it, it remind it reminded me some movies from even earlier times. You mm. know, mm. yeah. It's it's just the cinematography and the technical stuff. Except, I, I don't mean the visual effects. Mm. I mean like the uh, the direction. Maybe the direction. I think yeah, Chris yeah. Columbus actually is. Pretty decent director. Yeah, yeah, I think he's he's pretty good, uh, and you know, like he's most known for well now now probably Harry Potter and before of course for the Home Alone films. Well, the first two anyway, uh, and I I think those movies uh, are great for what they are. Like uh, of course you know they're a bit cheesy nowadays, yeah, it's, but it's... Uh, yeah, I th I think they're great, and he really proved that he can work with child child actors. And, uh... Yeah, that's true. The child. Uh, actress there I think the direction is really good mm. that he pulled off some of the yeah. best performances from the from the kids yeah I think uh, uh, Ron Weasley uh, played by Rupert Grin yeah yeah he he's amazing he yeah, really like I can believe every Every of his gesture and expression yeah. and yeah. his, he's very natural. Yeah, like he's, it. he's totally a natural. Yeah. Like, I think, and I think you, you, you'll agree that, uh, actually Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter is the weakest link, at least in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to say this, um, because I think that Harry Potter as a character in this movie isn't really interesting that much, you know? That's, yeah. Um, but, just kind of sad for the main title character. That, that's another. That's another thing uh, that is just you just miss from the books because mm -hmm. uh, in in the books, of course, it's all told from Harry's point of view. So you you see his uh, thinking process, oh, yeah. and it's it's not written in the first person. It's uh, but every it, it, he's a viewpoint character. Yeah. So uh, so so you get to know him really. Uh, and whereas in the movie, he's basically just the audience sur surrogate mm -hmm. learning about, uh, the world and, uh, you know, Harry, this is it. And Harry, this is that. And this is where you go to do this. And, uh, so he's not, yeah, he's not really that much of an interesting character in this film. It gets better with the, with the subsequent films mm -hmm. because he really gets into like being the hero. Uh, going back to uh, the performances of the of the kids, and th there are uh, of course some lines and maybe whole scenes that are not so great. Mm -hmm. But uh, considering that uh, they had basically almost no acting experience whatsoever, uh, they actually gave pretty good performances in general. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. I think that. Uh, 
the her- the Harper guy. Uh, uh, Daniel, Daniel Radcliffe. Radcliffe yeah. yeah, he's as we said probably the weakest of the group, and yeah. some of his lines and and the, this fake smile yeah. all over the place. It's just it just didn't mm. work that yeah. well. But the other but the other guys in the group, I mean uh, Draco Malfoy is oh Draco s- yeah so slimy and yeah yeah he's really good yeah yeah those two especially the yeah. uh, Ron and, and Draco. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, in the documentary we watched, they said that Daniel Radcliffe was the only one who had some acting experience before. <laughs> yeah, but also the Dra- oh, Draco, Draco as well. Yeah, yeah but uh, uh, I meant of the of the main three. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what about the adult actors? The whole movie is actually very very well cast, mm. I think. And uh, of course, everyone will tell the same thing. Yeah. I think that Alan Rickman is genius. I think that we uh did we discuss this uh, that he, he looks kind of I don't know what to think about him you mm. know because he kind of he's kind of this vi- villain type but is he really like there is always something mm. into his uh, yeah delivery that that yeah. kind of yeah. makes you think that maybe this is not really the bad guy mm. and it's it's greatly played yeah. by Yeah well the story goes actually uh I don't know how much uh, you 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 said you saw some of the later films. Oh uh, yes, well, uh, I think bits bits of yeah them. yeah yeah. Uh, so uh, actually, you know, he turns out to be sort of a good good guy in the end. Oh really? No, not like the the superhero, but uh, he, he, you know, there's an ambiguity to him. He's not all bad. J.K. Rowling actually told him this, even though the books weren't finished at the time. Mm-hmm. So he already knew. And I, I don't know, I'm not sure how much she told him, like exactly, if she told him exactly the uh, like story points or if she just told him that he should be ambiguous. But he definitely took that advice and uh, mm-hmm. played it that way, which I thought was really good. Yeah, and actually, you know, the uh, we talked about the, the actor who played Dumbledore, uh, Unfortunately, passed away after after the first two films. Yeah, Richard uh, Harris. Yeah. So actually, in uh, this uh, viewing, uh, it was the first time I realized uh, he's uh, the emperor from Gladiator. <laughs> uh, and uh, well, I mean, I realized it because I looked on IMDb and I was like, Gladiator. Oh, because, <laughs> you know, he's got the super long beard and long hair and glasses. So he looks totally different. But uh, yeah. Yeah. And also a father of uh, the other Harris. Jared Harris. Yeah. Jared yeah. Harris. yeah. yeah. He's uh, one of the best television actors. Right now, I would say yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah, very he's, flexible. Yeah, he's in everything. <laughs> yeah, and he's in everything, and yeah. we have worked on some of his films. Yeah, we worked on uh, the Terror, which uh, actually the Terror is uh, to this day it was like my first uh, bigger project that I worked on as a compositor, and to this day I think it's uh, the project I'm the proudest of when I see it like the effects there are really good yeah uh, especially considering how hard they were to do <laughs> yes it was yeah. it was very challenging <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if we, we can actually t- talk about this stuff, you know. Like, yeah, uh, probably not in any detail okay, because of so our NDA. But, okay. Yeah, we weren't gonna tell anything. But yeah, that w- it wasn't an easy project. Let's leave it at that. But I'm very proud of the results. Well, anyway, uh, talking of visual effects, <laughs> yeah, it's a... as visual effects artists, we uh, were very interested in the in seeing the visual effects here. I think it's sort of. Uh, interesting how some of the effects are really good, and then there are some that are just terrible. Very terrible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think that uh, the snake scene in the zoo. Mm. Oh yeah, that we were. We we don't know if if it's uh, animatronic or if it's fully CG because it looks. Yeah. It was very nice, corrected, composite into the shot. Yeah, and also the animation was yeah. really yeah. really good. Yeah, but it was not really good. Was the sport thing? What is it? Yeah, Quidditch. <laughs> yeah, that was a hell of a mess. Yeah, from today's point of view, though, like I remember when I watched it as a kid, uh, it seemed great to me. Like, and uh, you know, and we afterwards we watched uh, a behind the scenes documentary, mm-hmm. uh, and they realized 
even at the time that the effects yep. weren't that Very great. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they, they, they just didn't have enough time mm. to uh, do them properly. Yeah. So. And even for, for today, uh, they were very ambitious mm. to be, to be honest, because what they did there, I think in nowadays yeah. when, when the, these kind of effects would be, uh, approximate, it, it, yeah. it would be very, very hard. Yeah. yeah. Some of, so exactly. Some of the shots, some of the shots in, uh, in the Quidditch match would have been really difficult even today. And also they would probably be full CG now. Yeah. But actually the kids were CG. From, uh, from time to time. Somewhere, I, but, yeah. uh, but they, they tried to, like, for the close-ups and, you know, like, they tried to combine a lot yeah. of, uh, of, uh, like, blue screen characters, but then they were obvious blue screens or yeah. green screens, whatever yeah. they were using then. I think it was a blue screen. It yeah. was very... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So today, probably a lot of, most of these shots would be full CG with maybe, like, only the closest characters being real on, shot on green screen. Uh, talking of Quidditch, by the way, uh, did you, from the movie, did you get the rules of Quidditch? No. Yeah, no, I didn't think so. <laughs> it was probably yeah. well, well said in the book. Or... Oh, yeah, definitely very clearly explained in the books. Uh, although, like, the sport itself doesn't make any sense, even, like, it, it's just uh, <laughs> kind of stupid. 99% of the time, the if the Seeker catches the Snitch, their team wins. So it's basically just a match between the two seekers and the other players are there just for You know, if I think about it, if it's a real sport and you're mm. and you're watching it, what what would you watch? Would you would you watch the seekers seeking the snake? Yeah probably because yeah. that's the most important part of the game. <laughs> yeah, but there there is also some other play, you know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You would miss it's it's kinda like if in a game of football or soccer for uh, our American audiences. <laughs> if there's all these uh, football players running around and scoring goals, but there's also two players and they uh, have they uh, lose uh, a mouse on the on the football field, and two of the players have to find and catch the mouse, and wh- whoever catches the mouse gets. 15 goals. <laughs> yeah, the game doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> I would be watching the guys so that are catching the mouse. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be really funny. <laughs> because I, I don't like soccer. <laughs> I think it would actually improve the game. <laughs> it, and, and, and that's actually true, but then it wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I, uh, I took a side, uh, side swipe for Quidditch, but uh, we were talking about VFX. Uh, and so, yeah, some of the v- Quidditch VFX weren't so strong. And uh, some of the, like, the creature effects, like, uh, for example, Fluffy, the three-headed dog, in some shots he looked really good, mm-hmm. but in some shots not so much. Yeah. Uh, I think the model was pretty good, but the, the animation sometimes wasn't that great. Um, I think that the dog wasn't really uh, co- uh, color-graded. Well, it was mm. very mm-hmm. decontrasted. Even though it was a night scene, mostly like uh, low light situation, mm. it was it was this was the thing that would tell that it's, mm, uh, it's probably. CG. Even yeah. though you know it's even though if it would be the perfectly made, it's still like fantasy stuff. But yeah, yeah. I also want to mention that if there is something really great, it's the practical effects. Yeah, they are amazing yeah. in this movie. There were points where I wasn't sure whether it was practical or CG. For example, like what I thought was amazing was the giant chess set. It was definitely for the most part practical, but I'm not sure about like when they were destroying each other, the, the chess figures, whether they were like actors in practical costumes or mm-hmm. if they were CG. I think they were probably CG, but no, it, I think that they mentioned in, uh, in the behind the scenes, they were destroying it like physically so mm. that's the kind of thing that works really well when it's a combination of all these techniques like the lord of the rings movies famously like did that really well yeah where it was impossible to do it with anything else they would use cg but otherwise they would always use like uh practical costumes and stuff which i uh, think they which is why i think they hold up to this day Exactly, and when two guys that are making uh, visual effects can't even tell, yeah, yeah. it's uh, no. 
really great. And uh, actually, like in Lord of the Rings, the practical effects hold up super well today, but some of the CG is quite very dated, is yeah. very dated. So yeah, it's same in this movie. I think mm. they were released in the same year or maybe following. Yeah, yeah, year. the same year. Yeah, and it's the same story. Yeah. you know the the, the visual effects, uh, especially with the with broom stuff, broomsticks. They are yeah. terrible. Yeah. There, there is a uh, too much of a, of a motion blur. Motion blur. Yeah, oh yeah, they, we we did notice that. Like, uh, I think they were trying to hide uh, the, the 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 CG, so they added like three times more motion blur than there actually would be if <laughs> if it was shot in reality. So yeah. yeah, exactly, and it was unnatural. And I think that if they choose not to. It would probably look maybe better because well, you didn't see the the shots without it, so maybe it was so obvious it was CGI that it was better this way. But mm. yeah, yes, and also I'd like to uh, say that the practical masks in this movie are very very good, and this is this is the part that really stands out yeah. and also holds uh, holds up definitely. Like even in next twenty years. Mm. It, this is gonna be just yeah yeah and uh, that's very realistic. That, that's unbeatable like where you you can look at films that are like forty years old and uh, if they're if they are well done practical effects uh they they will look one hundred percent real forever like for example like uh, when uh, in Star Wars. You know, some of the aliens in the cantina were like just rubber masks with no articulation. But Chewie is just a character, and he yeah. he he's awesome. Like uh, that that will always work. Yeah, exactly. And in the in the scene, library scene, is it right? Library when there are the the goblins. Oh, the bank. Oh, it's a bank. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I'm not really a Harry Potter fan. <laughs> yeah. What what am I doing here? <laughs> um, that's why you're here. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, the uh, the goblins were excellent, but I have yep. noticed one thing that is it, it kind of tells that it's a uh, it's a mask, mm. and it, it was uh, their hands. Ah. They, they were really long, and oh, when, yeah, when they they're were using it, it articulated. Yeah, there, there, mm. there was no motion in it, and yeah. It just yeah. But except for that, mm. it looks one hundred percent real. Like, yeah. and you could also see uh, like some of the background. Ones were just rubber masks with no articulations. Yeah, I think so, that, that some of them were not people in it, but they were just uh, 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 puppets. Puppets, yeah. Maybe, maybe. But I think most were either like uh, little people or children. But the main characters definitely had really great masks. Yeah, and also his mouth. I thought yeah. it's a uh, it's a combination of CG and in the behind the scenes we saw it, it's actually yeah. really mock up pretty well in the yeah yeah yeah. With, with his face and mm. and it d does some facial expression and, mm -hmm. and the movement of the mouth is yeah. really great. Yeah. And Peter, is there uh, in the books a specific scene or 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 a chapter that was left out from the movie and it's your favorite or your personal favorite that you really wish to be included um, in the movie? Um, not really. Like looking back, uh, you know, uh, the, those two scenes that I mentioned before. Uh, they weren't really important to the story, and uh, now I don't really miss any any of the scenes in in the movie. And even before, I only missed them because I wanted everything from the book to oh. be in the movie. But uh, obviously, now I realize that that's not how movies work. So, you know, I think they did. I I think most of the choices they made were pretty good in terms of leaving stuff out of the movie. Um, yeah. And any important character was left out from from the movie, or? Um, actually, no. I think uh, I I I think they uh, like in in some movie adaptations. Uh, like for example, in in uh, I don't think you watch Game of Thrones either, right? Oh. Yeah, but in Game of Thrones, they do this thing where sometimes instead of introducing a new character from the books yeah. they have uh, the thing done by some character that we already know yes. uh, but i don't think the harry potter films do this a lot yes. maybe maybe like the later movies because you know, you know like it's interesting the, the first book is about this thick and it's like two and a half hour movie or 
something like that. The fifth book is like this, and the movie is shorter than this one. Really? It's I, I think it's possibly the it's possibly the shortest of all the films. It's like under two hours or so something. So there is a lot of left out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then I think at, at the same time, it's probably my favorite film. Uh, the fifth one. Yeah, and also it might have to do with uh, the fact that the that book five is well close to my least favorite mm -hmm. uh so the fact that they left out a lot of the stuff that i thought was boring in the book <laughs> it's uh it actually improves it mm -hmm. but uh yeah i don't think they they left out a lot of important stuff from book five and still like they uh they managed to make it really good but we'll get to that uh in a future installment so actually yeah let's uh let's go to uh a conclusion so uh what what were your overall feelings on this movie did you enjoy it well um yes i think that i wouldn't like this movie back then because mm. i was really not into these kind of movies but mm. but i grew up a little bit <laughs> And I think that the, the movies are, it's, uh, it's real magic. The mm. movie is really magic, magical. And, uh, it's, uh, beautifully shot. The, the story, the truth is because there is a, so much exposition, mm. the story really, really kicks in, in, in the second half of the movie. Yeah. No, no. Um, but it's, and uh, then, and then it does feel a little rushed, at least to me. Yeah. Like, uh, it's, it's, uh, sort of slow, 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 and then they rush the ending. So, yeah, the pacing is a, a little inconsistent. Yeah, because they, yeah. they had to put a lot of things and, you know, yeah. it's understandable. Because, you know, it, 20 years ago, it, it wasn't really that, um, common to have a kids movie mm. that has uh, more than two hours. Yeah. You know, because kids, yeah. Yeah. kids don't really, uh, concentrate for two hours. Yeah. Even me, <laughs> you know, sometimes I cannot really uh, sit through a three hour long movie. Mm -hmm. But, uh, because, uh, kids grew with this movie and mm -hmm. they get older, they can actually, uh, just, uh, extend the length of the yeah. movie. And it's, uh, I don't know if any of the, if all the movies, because you said that there is a, there is a movie that, that's, uh, Shorter than this, yeah, yeah. but I think that most of the movies are even longer. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, uh, as for me, I, uh, as a big fan of the books, uh, I, I think this one is delightful. Like, uh, it, it introduces the world in a very, in some very interesting ways, uh, visually. And, uh, uh, so it's sort of wondrous. Like, uh, you just, dis you're discovering this, this world along with Harry. Uh, it's, it's got its flaws, but, uh, uh, I, I, l looking at it now, I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely a lot more than some of the other films. And, uh, uh, actually, uh, we'll get to those later because, uh, what it got, uh, how I got the idea to make this video was I started rereading the books which I actually do about once a year. So I, I started rereading, rereading them again. And, uh, after ha having finished the, the first book, uh, I thought like, how, how about, you know, watching the film? And I, I actually wanted to make a video about the Harry Potter films, uh, for a while. So I, I decided to ask Jakub, who I knew hasn't read the books, uh, to join me. And, uh, as I'm, as I will, uh, keep finishing the books uh i want to i want to always like finish the book and then watch the film and i'm i'm pretty near finish uh, finishing the second book now uh so we will probably uh soon be doing part 2 uh of this series and then uh probably because the following books are a bit longer uh it's not going to be like one video every week but uh as I finish the book, we plan to continue this series on the Harry Potter movies. Uh, well, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support this channel, you can do so by becoming a patron or donating directly to my PayPal. Uh, I'm very grateful for all the help. Thank you guys very much. Thanks for watching and may, may the, the Schwartz, Schwartz be, be with, with you. you. <laughs>